But let's go now to London, where we're joined by former PM, leading no campaigner, my old boss, Tony Abbott. Tony, welcome, as always, to Credlin. I want to start, if I can, with a voice, please. This week, Chief Yes campaigner Noel Pearson proved what we've been saying for so long, that this voice is not about uniting Australians. It's actually about division. It's about entrenching race in our system of government. It's about creating a two-tiered Australia. Have a listen. It's too late now for us to talk about assimilation. Mm. We're not going to turn into whitefellas tomorrow. Our children are going to remain Aboriginal. And I think we can accept that. I think Australians accept that. We can't turn the clock back. It's going to be an enriching thing for the country when we do this. Tony Abbott, your response? Well, uh, no one wants to turn black fellas into white fellas. What I want to do, what Warren Mundine and Jacinda Price want to do, is to turn everyone into Australians. And the problem with the voice is that it basically sets up two Australias within one country or two nations within one country, and uh, that's, just, that's just wrong. I mean, I am all in favour of acknowledging the Aboriginal people were here first, I'm all in favour of saying that we should be proud of the Indigenous heritage that our country has, as well as its British foundation <clears throat> and its immigrant character. What I don't do, what I don't want, is to see some Australians be given more say over the governance of this country than others. And I just wish that Noel, who on other issues has been sensible and brave, uh, wasn't uh, constantly bullying no campaigners like Jacinta Price. Well, let's just stay with Noel Pearson because one of the features of this debate about The Voice has been a lack of detail and, and then comments from the Prime Minister and others that it's got nothing to do with a treaty, that it's just about a, a polite and generous offer, he says, from Indigenous Australians to right wrongs. I played at the top of the show, Tony, a number of, of vision grabs, Noel in Noel's own words, making it clear that the first door mm -hmm. is The Voice, the second door is a treaty. Now, treaty is absolutely part of the Uluru agenda. Completely correct. Uh, the activist mantra all along has been voice, treaty, truth. First the voice, then these treating, treaties, including reparations, percent, perhaps as a percentage of GDP, and then rewriting Australia's history as a story of shame. Voice, treaty, truth, it's a package deal. Uh, and let's say no to the package, beginning with saying no to the voice. All right, let's go to some issues uh, where you are now in London. We had a record number of African migrants, uh, many males, uh, military age, land on the Italian island of Lampedusa over the past week. We know in terms of Aussie dollars spent, mm -hmm. we're looking at $15 million a day housing asylum seekers in the UK. I know it's a huge issue over there. Uh, please tell me you're in London to help them stop the boats. Well, I, I wish I were here to help stop the boats because obviously Australia has led the world. We are the only country which has successfully prevented large-scale illegal immigration by boats. And on the scale that is now happening in Europe, it really does amount to a peaceful invasion. I think that all of the countries of Europe, particularly Britain, have a lot to learn from our experience. And in the end, what you've got to be prepared to do is say to people who arrive illegally by boat, not only will you never get a permanent residency, but we are actually going to send you back to the place from which you set out. And that means, uh, I think, naval patrols in the Mediterranean, if necessary, to land some of these people back on the beaches of Libya, <coughs> rather than simply collecting them and taking them to France, Italy, Spain and elsewhere. All right, let's go to our podcast. We'll release a, a new episode tomorrow. I've got a bit mm -hmm. of a sneak peek for everyone at home. I'll start with a bit of the history behind your election as party leader in 2009 because you refused to 
back Malcolm Turnbull's push for the coalition to roll over on mm. Kevin Rudd's emissions trading scheme and then, of course, your fight with Julia Gillard mm -hmm. over her carbon tax. Have a listen. In 2010, the coalition did much better than expected, taking the fight up to Labor on climate. In 2013, where climate was probably, along with the boats, the biggest single issue in the mm. campaign, we had a thumping win. Mm. In 2016, when climate wasn't an issue between the parties, uh, we, went, we, we, we went backwards. In 2019, uh, you had Labor's very hardline emissions policy. Mm. So in 2019, where climate was again a big issue, Scott Morrison had his miracle win. And, of course, in 2022, uh, when the Morrison government had... It signed looked, up to. It, it, it had signed up to net zero. Yep. And, and therefore the sting had gone out of this politically, uh, we obviously had a, had a very bad result. So where the coalition is prepared to fight, we do well. Where we roll over, we do badly. That's the clear lesson. So, Tony Abbott, you're right to point that out on climate when the coalition had a conviction position it worked electorally as well as being right for our country. We're certainly seeing that with the voice in Peter Dutton. Do you think mm -hmm. there might be a turnaround in the coalition now that we're seeing, you know, communities come out against these mass renewable projects, decimating farming land and more? Look, the point we made on the podcast, Peter, is that if climate becomes a cost of living issue, the coalition does extremely well... Uh, where climate remains uh, a moral issue, if you like, uh, the coalition struggles. Now, what we're seeing is that the efforts to reduce emissions very dramatically are not only putting power prices through the roof, but they are now starting to absolutely devastate the Australian countryside. And here in Britain, the effort to cut emissions means that people are being forced to get rid of their uh, petrol or diesel-powered cars... Uh, they're about to be forced to uh, get rid of their gas boilers to heat their homes. And this really is starting to trigger something of a popular revolt because while all of us want to save the only planet that we've got, uh, none of us want to devastate our economies and turn life upside down in order to do it, particularly when what we're looking at is, even on some of the worst uh, IPCC scenarios, uh, a couple of degrees of temperature increase over many, many decades indeed. In the end, we've got to put people's well-being first. Uh, and that's what so many governments uh, have neglected uh, for the last decade or so. You're not wrong, Tony Abbott. I'll leave it there. I know you're back uh, in Australia very soon to get back into the No campaign. We'll see you then. Thank you for your time.